everyone welcome to a new no code tutorial using bubble and today we will make a very very simple um, directory application a listings or directory or listings application which should just show you the basic functionality of bubble how it works and um, yeah how you can have like a directory and the ability for users to add new listings to the directory so um, you need a bubble account to do that which is you can have a bubble account for free and you can create a new app for free. So after you made an account, you can click on new app and this pop-up will open. Just give a name to your new app. I'll just call it uh, directory listings demo. And you can leave all the other inputs uh, empty and just click on create new app. And uh, what we wanna do after we create our new app, we wanna start with a blank page. So there will be like a pop-up here, the new application assistant, and we wanna start with a blank page. And uh, we can get go through the application system. It's quite helpful sometimes. So let's get started. Um, sure, let's uh, change the name in the browser tab. The, in the language should be English. Um, the theme, actually, I'll change it to the um, Twitter bootstrap, but I, you can use whatever you like. That's just the design. And the uh, favicon will just leave like that. And that's it. Let's close it. And so now we have our app. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, start with the logic of the application. Keep in mind, uh, I'm going to keep this tutorial very simple and, and quite quick. Um, and it shouldn't go into a lot of detail. It just show you, should show you the basic functionality of how like a directory um, and or listings application works in essence on Bubble. And it should also show you how easy it is to create a, a web app using using Bubble. And um, exactly. So what I'm going to start with... Um, um, I'm going to go to the data tab and currently we have our data type user which is always uh, standard uh, every bubble app comes with this data, data type and it consists of an email and a password as well but you can see the password field because we don't have access to the password as it's encrypted but what we want to do is we want to create a new type and we're just going to need one type for this um, app which is going to be the listing and for listing let's say we want to have a name of the listing which will be a text and we want to have um, a description of the listing which will also be a text and we want to have an image which will be an image and let's maybe have um, a location and the location will of course be a geographic address and that's basically it we have created our fields or data fields for our data type listing but one thing we want to now add, and that's a bit, um, some people get confused with that, is that we want, currently these two data types have nothing in common. But what we want to do is we want to create um, kind of a link between these two data types. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new field and call this field user. And the field type will be user. Or actually to make it more clear, let's give it a name created by user and the field type is a user. So every listing will have a field which will be created by the user and um, this will be a user which is this data type. And for the user, just let's add a name, a username, and this will be a text as well. And that's basically it as far as our um, data types and our data structure goes. And now we can actually start building the app. It, again, it, it's, it should be quite simple and um, won't take a lot of time. So I'm going to go through this a bit faster. So um, what I want to do is, what I always want to do is I remove this. So I double clicked on the page and I remove this checkbox to not make it fixed width. Uh, so it will be responsive. And uh, what I want to do now is I'm going to change the background style to something like a grayish color. So it's nice just to look at. And what I want to have, what I want to have is just a simple listing. So let's say, okay. Let's add a title. So I click on text, drag that inside, and say um, our listings application. And uh, under style, you can choose a style with some styles already predefined, for example, center title large or center title medium, the body text. And if you want to change these styles, you can go to styles and look for them, for example, the body, and you can say the standard body should be now from now on a font size of 16 and the font should be this, whatever. And what I'm going to do for this application now, because we're only going to use a few elements and it's not a huge application, I'm just going to click on remove style 
and define each cell individually. For, so for example, for this text, I'm going to say, okay, it should be quite large, uh, 34 pixel si font size, and center it, maybe make it bold, and that should be it. Okay, great. Now next, um, one of the most important aspects of a bubble application is a repeating group. And a repeating group, um, you can search for it by clicking here and entering repeating group, or you can just find it in the elements tree. And let's just drag it inside. And what a repeating group does, it searches the database for certain data types and displays them in a group. And you can add filters to the search and you can basically search for certain data types and repeating groups are, are the things that make Bubble very powerful and most applications use repeating groups. I, I can't think of any application that won't use a repeating group except if it's, if it's a static website or something. But um, exactly, so uh, what we want to do is define a type of content. In this case, um, it will be our listing. We want every group within the repeating group to show a listing and what is the data source? Um, again, you can go into a lot of detail here uh, and have some advanced uh, functionality of, or advanced uh, methods of choosing a data source. But what I'm just going to do is the classic one. Is gonna, I'm going to click on do a search for and type listing. So what will happen now? I'm defining, okay, the content of each group within the repeating group should be a listing. And the data for this type of content should come from just a simple search for all listings in our database. We could add a constraint now and say, okay, so the name should be something like test, and then only listings with the name test will be displayed. Well, well now we just want to display all of them. Okay, great, so what I'm gonna do next, is I'm gonna maybe center this, make it a bit larger, and now I'm gonna add a group. So I'm gonna search for group, and I'm gonna drag it inside this repeating group. And as you can see, there's a difference between having it outside a repeating group or inside. You see the dashed line can, it is red now, which means it's going to be inside the repeating group, and all groups will, will be populated with this group, as you will see now. And I'm going to make this larger. I'm going to center it vertically and horizontally. And to make the design a bit nice, I'm going to add a shadow um, with a bit lighter box shadow color. I'm going to add a roundness. Curve radius, and I'm going to remove the separato, so the line between the groups here, so it will be, look nicer. Great, so we have already our um, design for a repeating group finish. Actually, I'm going to make this a bit smaller, so it will look better like this. And let's create only three rows, so we can drag that down, that looks nicer. And we can do like this. And then let's center this. And great, that's already it. So what we want to do now is click on the group and say, okay, the type of content will again be a listing and the data source in this case should be the current cells listing. So the repeating group is doing a search for listing and populating each individual cell and we put a group within each cell and this group should get its data from the current cell. And now we have access to all the data fields of the data type of listing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the image, I'm going to drag it inside the group and um, resize it a bit and say it should be a dynamic image and we're going to insert dynamic data and say parent group the parent group is this group and it should be parent groups listing image I'm going to say stretch okay and now I'm going to add a text next to that I'm going to say put it here I'm going to remove the style and I'm going to um, center that and say okay this should be parent groups listing name Great. Put it like this. Let's make that bold. Now I'm going to add the text beneath that. And this should be. Let's make that the same size actually. Like this. This should be parent groups listing description. And let's make that smaller. And beneath that, we'll just add the location, which will be. Would be parents, parent group listing, location, formatted address. And I'm gonna center it again, make that a bit smaller, and give that like a grayish tone, maybe like this. Great. So basically, that's already it. Uh, if, if I'm gonna preview our app now, uh, there won't be any repeating, there won't be any groups, uh, and we'll see why. 
And this is just because we don't have anything inside our database. We don't have any listing inside our database. So let's go back again. And um, exactly what I want to do, I want to center this, which I did already, okay. And I want to apply a max width. Because what will happen if you have a huge screen, this whole group will be stretched enormously and it will look really distorted. So what I want to do, apply max width. So basically, this repeating group will never get larger than what you see right now on your screen. Okay, um, so next what I want to do is 